Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And on today's episode, we're gonna answer the question, what can mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy treat? And there are a variety of diseases or disorders that mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be used to treat, not necessarily um, as, a, as a primary treatment, but as an augmentation to other therapies. And so we're gonna go through a paper that is discussed, it's a review paper on mild, uh, mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy and looking at all these different um, variety of conditions that many people don't really realize could be treated by mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, before we start, we use mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy mostly with patients that have uh, severe dysautonomia, um, some neurodegeneration, whether that's Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, um, and a variety of other things like brain fog um, and other things that have difficulty getting oxygen to the brain. Where hyperbaric oxygen therapy has been FDA approved for um, are not necessarily things that we use for treatment. Those are um, things like bone fractures, um, are the main things, skin infections or wound healing, uh, wound care are the main um, FDA approved sources among other things. So if we get into this paper, um, here it is. It is from the Journal of Physiological Sciences in 2019, Mild Hyperbaric Oxygen Mechanisms and Effects. Um, the abstract just talks about how adequate oxygen supply by exposure to mild hyperbaric oxygen. I'm gonna talk about what this means in a sec. Um, at approximately a high atmospheric pressure and increased oxygen concentration has the possibility of improving the oxidative metabolism in cells and tissues without side effects like barotrauma or uh, pressure trauma and excessive production of uh, oxidants or reactive oxygen species. So mild hyperbaric oxygen is this 35 to 40% oxygenation versus 100% oxygenation that may come from medical grade oxygen chambers, okay? Still has a similar high atmospheric pressure. Um, so if we look at this, um, what is the difference between hyperbaric oxygen versus a like normal baric when you just have like an oxygen cannula in your nose? Um, it's basically the pressure that's dissolving oxygen into the tissues, into the blood. So oxygen that's dissolved into the blood plasma is referred to as dissolved oxygen. Um, Again, this just kind of shows that it's related, it can inhibit metabolic syndrome, lifestyle related diseases, including type two diabetes and hypertension. Uh, okay, the possible side effects of a, of a high hyperbaric oxygen, so not mild, uh, with 100% oxygen could be like myopia, so a nearsightedness or the ability to see far, and cataracts, just because of the buildup of the reactive oxygen species. Um, so that's why mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy with 35 to 40% oxygen can still do a lot of benefit. Here again is just a description of a blood vessel with red blood cells. And on each of those red blood cells, you have oxygen, the black things that are attached to hemoglobin molecules in the red blood cell. And so what can happen is you can see on this side, this has no hyperbaric oxygen therapy. You have dissolved oxygen in the plasma outside the cell. But the inside of the cell, you have them, they're almost all saturated with oxygen. You see there's like one that's missing there, one there, one there. So there's some that are missing. Well, when you have hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you dissolve, you get more oxygen into the blood. So you have more dissolved oxygen. You can see all of the oxygen molecules around the cells, but then all of the cells are completely saturated with oxygen. So you're just getting more oxygen to the tissues for healing and repair better than before. So what does it work for? What does it help? Um, there are plenty of studies in this review. Most of them are on um, rats, mice, other things like that. There are a couple on humans, but basically metabolic syndrome. So it can improve rats with metabolic syndrome um, to lower blood pressure, to lower blood glucose, lower total cholesterol. Um, here are all those studies. Again, there, like I said, there's only a couple on human on humans. The rest are mostly rats and mice, but type two diabetes, again, lowering blood sugar, uh, that goes right along with the uh, metabolic syndrome. We have diabetes induced cataracts. So even though a high atmosphere or high pressure, high oxygen load 
hyperbaric oxygen can maybe induce cataracts. Diabetes induced cataracts can actually be improved with mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Hypertension, we can decrease uh, blood pressure with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Arthritis, which we know is kind of an inflammatory disorder, that can be improved uh, by decreasing the levels of reactive oxygen species. Pigmentation, proliferation, so basically uh, skin issues, whether when the skin undergoes age-related degenerative changes, um, that a lot of that is due to poor antioxidant status or uh, too much reactive oxygen species. So the dissolved oxygen can improve that as well. Adaptation of neuromuscular system. So basically um, enhancing the muscle's ability to recover um, and therefore then not only improve the ability of the nerves to attach to the muscles for uh, a better output. And then infertility which again, this is kind of a cool one because this was one of these was done on women. Um, when 37 women with intractable infertility received five embryos, over five embryo transfers, but did not have pregnancy, it was basically without birth. Um, they were exposed to mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy before getting uh, the next embryo. And uh, many women, 13 out of the 37, achieved clinical pregnancy. Five gave birth. Uh, two women achieved natural conception and gave birth. Uh, but there obviously were some that did not, right? Five women had miscarriages. So, um, but that's still like after five embryos and not having a pro not having not getting pregnant to hyperbaric oxygen therapy, many women were able to achieve um, um, achieve uh, implantation properly. Parkinson's disease, um, like we said, Parkinson's disease we use that a lot uh, because neurodegeneration has poor inflammation control. Um, and that is it. So Parkinson's as well. So um, I just wanted to throw this one out there. It's just a really quick one on the beneficial uses of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Like we said, we usually uh, use it on our on our uh, patients with dysautonomia, um, with poor so poor autonomic system functioning, and neurodegeneration. But there are many other uses that that people can can try hyperbaric for. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love to see them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them below as well. Thanks again and have a good day. Stay healthy.